Lost Ark is a bit of an interesting release. It's been out in Korea since 2019, with some of the content to this day only being released in that region as well. It seems the main reason why they did this is for trying to pace out the content so that way players don't just rush through it and have essentially a phased launch release like other titles did. This is an interesting way to try to stretch out the life of the game. First off, the soundtrack in Lost Ark is really good. A lot of different types of music will play depending on where in the world you are, like what region you're in. And all of it fits the regional theme very well and sounds great. Graphics in Lost Ark are also a strong spot. The game looks great and has amazing in-game cutscenes that actually kind of rival Warcraft 3. Red smoke. The western section has been taken. Very well. We'll break through the castle gate as it is. Come on. Let's go. Even the in-game sections that show landmarks and set pieces with in-engine rendering look really good and hold up well. Now, combat reminds me a lot of Path of Exile, crossed with Diablo, crossed with a fast-paced MMORPG. Lost Ark has the speed and the monster density of Path of Exile, the overall theme and gameplay and sort of style of Diablo. And it also has skills from, like, an MMORPG. Combat is extremely smooth. Skills will chain into each other like butter on most of the classes. Speaking of classes, there's a lot to pick from, and each one is very different from each other. For example, my main character is a Deadeye. You can switch between weapons with varying effective ranges, from handguns to shotguns to a rifle. Nobody uses the rifle, but it's there. The Soul Fist. This is like a monk character, but can actually build up a resource over time that they can unleash to change their skills either a little or a lot. The main classes all have subclasses to pick from, two I previously mentioned, or subclasses. This increases the amount of options to pick from even more. Some of the subclasses are very different from one another's, so if you like making alts, you'll pretty much always have a very different character. There's five main base ones, and I couldn't even count all the subclasses. However, Lost Ark makes you pick your subclass basically right out of the gate. Sure, there's like an in-game tester so you can like sort of try it out, but this is pretty early in the game, so it kind of rushes you to pick, like, right away. As well as character level, there's roster level. This is an account-wide level that provides bonuses to every character on your account. You gain experience by pretty much doing anything in-game, but the collectibles give you the most. Roster level is essentially your account level, however, it's really not an integral part of the progression after, like, the second half of the game. The stats, while free, they're not overly substantial. As you level your character, you also gain skill points that are spent on that character individually. These can be freely spent or refunded at any time. Each skill can be allocated points to level up. They do a little bit more damage, have a little bit more modifier, and at intervals can be modified with specific unique modifiers that range from insanely good to absolute garbage. For example, one of them is mana cost reduced by 50% on a few of mine. I didn't even use 10% of my maximum mana with throwing down every single one of my skills. So what's the point? This was coupled next to ones that like reduce their resistance by 20%. That's a 20% damage bump on everything you do. That's way better. One great thing about these skills is you don't have to reset or refund or anything like that. Like with WoW. It's anytime in game and it encourages you to do it often because you never know what you're gonna like or what you're not going to like or what's going to be good or what's not going to be good but since you have the freedom you can try anything at any time another great part of this is at the top of your character sheet there's presets for this presets for your gears and skills this allows you to try different builds with zero cost in-game money and zero investment of your time at all, seeing as you could just oh, my switch back to your base preset once you're done trying it out. Pretty early in, you unlock strongholds. Basically, these are WoW garrisons from the later versions of the game, but they're mixed in with phone game time locks. You send like boat crews out on missions that cost literal hours in real life, or to like the craft things, which can take like 20 minutes. 
Yeah, Lost Ark has crafting, but only kinda. Basically, there's like gathering skills as you would expect, like mining and herbing. These are used to essentially feed the crafting in your stronghold. However, the crafting system is really bad. You can't make like weapons or armor or anything like that. It, the progression isn't through this. So, for example, what you would expect to use ores and trees for, uh, you don't. You use it to upgrade buildings instead. One interesting thing about the gathering professions is the limitation on how much per day you could do it with essentially Archage's labor system. If you're not familiar with that, you get like a maximum energy bar that regens over time to a maximum amount per day based off of like 10 minutes or something. Personally, I, I gather quite a bit of stuff and I never really ran out, so I don't get the point of this. If you run out, there's potions that you can restore it with on the cash shop though for a nominal fee. Overall, the Stronghold system feels like a phone game. You can wait literally hours or pay a nominal fee to speed it up, of course. And the potion slash items you can make here are actually really not that useful, especially useless when compared to their high time cost. Some of them are actually really expensive material costs, too. The entire Stronghold system feels like bad WoW garrisons. Keeping in mind, most people weren't big fans of garrisons either. The main attraction on the PvE side is the world and the main quests and the continent quests. Some of the quests are pretty familiar, but the main thing Lost Ark does that I'm a huge fan of is it has a distinct lack of backtrack. So many other games make you run back and forth across the map all the time, or return to a town just to turn in a quest, just to leave that town to go back to where you already were doing that quest just to leave the zone. Lost Ark is really good at keeping the movement forward. However, a lot of the quests in the game are a little weak. Some of them are literally walk back and forth like three steps to talk to these people. Others are so quick you'll be done in literal seconds. Like, there's spontaneous quests that pop up from time to time. These were a good idea with bad implementation. They will show up when you're just near them, and a lot of the time you do like two things and it's over. So it just blows over super quick. Once you finish what I'm going to call the axe, mainly the introductory quest with Lutera, you unlock essentially the actual game. You're given a boat and you can sail from continent to continent. There's also random islands you can explore as well in between them. Each of which of these has different things to do and even more collectibles on them. This is a theme. One great feature about sailing is the like GPS auto sailing. Sometimes sailing can be a few minutes, so instead of having to like auto run in a direction and like mess around on your phone, you can actually set it up to self-drive directly to where you want it to go and like walk away. It's really nice because it gives you a chance to just like walk away for a second and not be punished for it. Like where you'll end up like auto running into a rock or something. Each continent you visit will be vastly different from the last one. Like the first one you're in like medieval Europe. The second one's like China, maybe a little bit later in the time period but not a ton. And then it's literally Warhammer 40k with tech priests, chaos space marines, and like trains and cities that look like they're lifted straight from Final Fantasy 7. Each continent also has a story and a theme that you go through in order to gain favor and trust with them to gain access to the thing you're chasing. Here's the hint, it's in the name of the game, and it's lost. It's really weird how the flow of content from continent to continent is this way, but overall it's actually pretty cool. Each one's so vastly different, and their individual story and atmospheres are just drastically different, so it's kind of fresh every time. Now if you're a big fan of collect-a-thon games, like I'm talking Banjo-Kazooie, Banjo-Tooie, Donkey Kong 64, like any of those games in the Nintendo 64 levels of collecting, you'll fit in great with Lost Heart. This game has so many things for you to collect, so many things for you to gather. It's going to keep you going for just hours of just going around and picking stuff up. Each zone has tons of different things for you to gather. Makoko Seeds, Hidden Stories, both of which, for example. Islands have island tokens that you can turn in and... Each one of them has varying degrees of difficulty, and some of them have very unique acquisition methods that you might even have to look up, they're so convoluted. It's pretty different. Some of the collectibles apply to what's called the Regional Adventurer's Tome. 
each zone has a few different things you can do that reward you with completion. For example, you could finish the main story quest there, do the dungeons within the region, as well as collecting some random drop collectibles that are a little hard to farm but also can be quest rewards. The rewards from this tome are immense, seeing as a lot of the items can be extremely useful that come from it. Some of them are like just straight up skill points. The tome also gives some of the most roster XP rewards in the game as well. Two major downsides to the tome are the random drop collectibles are hard to farm as they can drop from any monster in the entire region, and the rapport system. Basically the rapport system, as you travel around the world, you come across people that you can befriend, but it's in a few arbitrary ways. Once a day you can play some of the sheet music that you found, or show them emotes that you also found. You can also just give them gifts, but the gifts are a little hard to come by. This doesn't sound too bad until you realize it would take weeks to finish this alone with just the music and the emotes. The items that you get that are gifts are extremely rare. However, they're mainly obtained by buying them with real-life currency on the cash shop. Basically, without using these items, you're pretty much never going to finish this part without a lot of time or effort. Unless you spend money. Lost Ark has an immense amount of content. This is a stark comparison to the last MMO I reviewed being New World. Once you finish the intro slash acts as I call them, and start exploring the world, you'll learn that this map is ginormous. It's not even empty. There's plenty to do in pretty much every place. There's a ton of systems I still didn't even understand in the game. There's so many layers of the game that, like, engravings. How do these even work? I still don't even know how these work. I'm like 50 hours in. When I first started playing Lost Ark, I saw tons of people saying that the game doesn't really start until you're several continents in and level 50. This is absolutely true. Sure, you don't level very fast anymore seeing as the requirement to level like 10 X's at level 50. But the roster XP keeps going normally, and so does your gear. And any additional skill points you gain from quests or tome rewards also provide progression. This reminds me a lot of Path of Exile. Most people say in that game that the game doesn't really begin until after the axe. Lost Ark has so much endgame content, it's almost too much, just like Path of Exile. If you like MMORPG dungeons, you'll fit right in with Lost Ark. You'll like them. So far, I haven't really found any I didn't like. There's a lot of them, and a few of them are also really unique. Some of the boss fights are really unique. Like, there's a yin-yang boss that you have to, like... I don't even know, I guess. I don't even know. It's really cool, though. But there's a lot of mechanics that some of these bosses have, but it's not overly too much. There's also a boss fight that's basically Kitava from Path of Exile. He even kind of looks like him, too. It's pretty wild. Free-to-play is an extremely touchy subject, and Lost Ark is no exception. I would argue that Lost Ark is mainly pay-to-not-grind, but it is most certainly not pay-to-win seeing as the player versus player content is fully sectioned off into an entirely separate game. Skills and things like that, the gear that you get are 100% separated. The gear is standardized. The skills you get to pick, you just get to pick max level skills. Everything is even in PvP. Nothing you get in the PvE world transfers over. Nothing the argument for pay to win and PvE content, basically, it just reduces the grind on some optional content, like the Strongholds. Lost Ark is without a doubt a multiplayer game, however, it can be fully enjoyed alone as well. For example, if somebody pays for the stuff in PvE, all it really does is progress them mainly optional stuff. It makes them a little bit further in these optional things, but it doesn't actually make their character any better. It's mainly cosmetic and just optional things that really don't matter. Sure, it does make the game a little bit pay to not grind, but it's not like the player is getting an unfair advantage over the other player, or an unfair advantage in the game that the other player didn't get. The guy who spent the money basically progress stuff that doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things a little bit faster than you did really. One multiplayer aspect of Lost Ark is guilds. No surprise, they are there. 
they have levels and like research that can be done. I haven't gotten too far into this because it's really slow or maybe my guild's dumb. I don't know. However, their player limits are super low. It's only like three officers and like 30 members. It's pretty low. On the topic of pay to win though, or free to play specifically, the monthly subscription Crystalline Aura does give you some things that free-to-play players probably would like to have, but all of it, for the most part, is time conveniences, as well as maybe a cost reduction of in-game currency. But you get so much in-game currency that this really isn't an issue. So if you wanted to be a fully free-to-play player, I don't really think this would be necessarily a bad thing. Now, one of the main collectibles you'll come across is sheet music. These can be found, quest rewards, or bought with in-game currency from special vendors. Some of them even unlock locked doors. Find like your Hearthstone return point and then take you back to it. Fast travel to your stronghold. Some of these basically they give you for free and the other ones are hidden and hard to obtain. Each class also plays a different instrument. It's actually really cool. Now a huge downside to Lost Ark is the story. Basically you're looking for Lost Arks. Wow. Without going into too much detail, it's like Hero's Arc, but without like the first half of the Hero's Arc. And oh man. There's daemons attacking. Everyone's got to band together and stop them. The good guys and the bad guys come together. Oh my god, the Horde and the Alliance is working together again. Also, for some reason in town, NPCs love to say the exact same lines over and over again. Like, is there a discount? They also, like, worship you as you're running past them as their savior, but, like, they just met you. So, how did you save them if they have no idea who you are? It's kind of weird. Since New World had server issues, we should also go ahead and discuss these on this game. According to reports in the EU, Lost Ark was a huge disaster, with queues taking forever as well as the servers going offline. Meanwhile, here in the NA region, we saw zero issues whatsoever. No queues, basically no hiccups at all minus the like 6 hours or 8 hours or whatever it was downtime on the launch day of free to play. I did however have a time where the dungeon matchmaking was basically lagged out. But after a few times I did get through, their genius is in their channel system. Basically, every single zone has channels. These are WoW layers or WoW shards for each zone, but you could switch between any of them at any time for the most part with the drop down box at the top right above the compass. This system is a far better implementation than WoW's layering and sharding. The only complaint I have is regularly it doesn't put you in the same one as party friends in the same party as you. Why? Why wouldn't it just put you in the same one? Interestingly enough, Lost Ark is now being released to the West, and it's getting an overall relatively warm reception. I'm a fan, but I really wish they would have ironed out more of the pay-to-not-grind stuff like the time gaining on the Stronghold, for example. This game has an absurd amount of content, with most of it being endgame. I've spent a fair bit of time playing Lost Ark, with 54 hours reported on Steam since launch, and honestly, I barely feel like I'm halfway through it. That's not even counting the days you could spend collecting stuff if you really wanted to. Lost Ark is a decent example of how to do free-to-play right. From what I can tell, the main game and the character progression is not really linked to you spending money. There are so many layers to the game, however, this may become a thing later in the game, but at this point in time, I haven't seen it. I've seen a lot of other reviewers calling the game pay-to-win, and I just plain out disagree. I've seen so many free-to-play games just assault your wallet the second you're in-game. Lost Ark never does that. Look at Planetside 2, MechWarrior Online, or War Thunder if you want a good example of pay-to-win games. Player spend money, player win game. That's how all those work. Lost Ark doesn't work like that. These games give an immense advantage to a player who spends money. Lost Ark, again, just doesn't do that. Honestly, I recommend you at least try Lost Ark if it interests you at all. It's free to play, and again, I don't really see the pay to win nature that everybody's complaining about. So really all you got to lose is time if you don't like it. So give it a shot. 
As always, thank you for watching the video. Please feel free to leave a like on the video or a comment if you have feedback on the video, suggestions for more games to play, or comments on the game itself.